everyone, and welcome to the rest of day 41 and day 42 of our RV10 build. We are continuing work on the tail cone. Before we get started, I want to say be sure to stick around until the end of the video. I have a really cool announcement to share with you guys, and you're not going to want to miss it. I also want to take a moment to send a quick thank you to Craig B., uh, for filling out the referral form for vans. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Any of you out there who have recently purchased an empennage kit or are planning to purchase one for any model of RV, please consider going to plainlady.com slash referral, download that form and fill it out with all of your information and then you can either email it or mail it back to vans. It's a really easy way to support my channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but they'll send me a hundred bucks as a thank you and it really means a lot to know that you guys are enjoying the videos. Back to the build. So we are back at it, like I said, here on the tail cone, and we're starting off back at the rear. And starting on 10-8, step six, you are making the F1056 rudder stop brace from aluminum angle. Now note when you are making this that one of the flanges on that brace flares out. It matches the shape of the tail cone, so it as it goes from aft to forward, it flares out to match that same flaring of the, uh, the tail cone there, how it, how it gets wider as you move forward. Just make sure to keep this in mind when you are going to cut it because the flange that goes along the web of the uh, 1012A bulkhead it doesn't widen, it's, it's perfectly straight 90 degree cuts on there. But if you go through the bandsaw and you cut along that line, you are gonna cut off your little flare there. So just make sure when you're going and running it through the saw to cut it, cut along those uh, flared lines there for the flange that's gonna sit against the rudder stop skin stiffeners. Now it was a really tight squeeze uh, in step seven here, you are now clamping down the uh, rudder stop brace that you've just made into the very back there of the tail cone. And uh, I slowed this down a little bit so that you can see a little bit better how I made this finally fit. I was able to get two of our blue uh, clamps down in there. Uh, it took a little bit of finagling and then I reached around and was able to squeeze them to clamp them down by sticking my hand through uh, one of the lightning holes in the F1011 uh, bulkhead. So uh, it can be done. It's just, again, it's going to take a little bit of wiggling to, to get everything there in place. Uh, and then you're going to put one of the those 12 inch drill bits there and use that to reach all the way down so that you can match drill the holes in the um, the rudder stop skin stiffeners into the flange there of that um, the rudder stop brace that you just made. And be sure to check your orientation when you're clamping this into place. The bottom flange of the rudder stop brace goes underneath the rudder stop skin stiffeners, not on top of them, it's underneath, because you need those holes in the rudder stop skin stiffeners to use to match drill the holes into the rudder stop brace. So you're also checking at this point, you wanna make sure to check that there is no twist in your tail cone. You're doing that before you go and do the drilling that I just mentioned. And the instructions go over where you're supposed to place the level to check for the twist. One of our um, little levels that we had, it was a foot long and it was just a little bit too short to really span the gap there at the F1012 bulkhead where it says to put one of the levels in the instructions. And so just grabbed a little bit of two by four, stuck that across and then put the level on top of there to check and make sure. And fortunately, everything was sitting perfectly. We had no twist, uh, which was just great. It made it nice and easy to not have to worry about anything to, to fix. We had it done right the first time. So next, you're gonna start attaching um, the F1006 bulkhead up there at the forward end of the tail cone and Nothing particularly crazy here. This is a lot like the other bulkheads, but the big thing you need to make sure to pay attention to on 10-9, step one and two, is which holes you are not supposed to drill. 
Um, make sure just to, to really pay attention to that and to mark them because th up there is where the fuselage is going to mate with the tail cone later on. And there are some holes on there that you're not supposed to do any final drilling with until you have all the parts put together apparently. So just make sure to mark all of that really well. We just took a marker and wrote literally on the side skins and everything and on the bulkhead itself. No, <laughs> if there were certain ones we weren't supposed to do. Um, yeah, just make sure to, to really go and read through that and check it out. And so then uh, the rest of the day we spent cutting apart uh, a few more pieces um, that were called for in the next few steps and we were uh, deburring uh, those. There was also some drilling and countersinking that was required in those parts. And um, so the, the tail cone just kind of sat there while we finished working on additional components that were gonna be needed uh, the next day when we got back to it. It was really crazy as we were getting started there the next day to look at the basket of Clecos that we had and to see that how few we had left because they're all there on the tail cone right now holding all the skins and all the stiffeners and all the bulkheads together. So it was really just kind of crazy to see how few we actually had left to work with. So you, you start off by inserting the longerons that we bent earlier in a previous video into place there in these notches in the bulkheads and along the skins. You can see here that we actually had to rotate the tail cone sideways in order to get it to um, fit there in the garage without opening the door in order for us to slide the longerons into place. <laughs> Uh, everything was starting to really come into shape and see just how big it all was. So in step five here, um, on 1010, we really, we didn't have the carpet tape that was mentioned in the instructions. So uh, instead of going out to go get some, because this is just being used to temporarily hold um, the 1010 Bravo spacer into place while you're doing match drilling through it, um, we just took some duct tape and cut it thin and wrapped it into little loops uh, around itself and then just used that to temporarily secure the, the spacer into place uh, for the match drilling that was coming up. So in 10-11 step one, um, you clamp the longerons into place along two axes of the tail cone. So you are clamping it to the side skin on each side, and then you are also clamping it to the aft deck. So you're trying to make sure to line up both flanges um, nice and flush with what you have to work with. And before we got started with all of the clamping, we really felt like um, the Londrons just weren't quite sitting right in the notches. It does mention in the instructions, it says that if they don't quite fit right into those notches that you can go and file it down slightly just to make it a better fit. And um, they just didn't seem like they were quite lining up just right there with the edge of the skin, not because the bend was off, but just because the notch seemed to be forcing it slightly lower than it needed to be. And so we went and just filed it ever so uh, gently, um, like it mentioned that you could do in 10-10 step four. And uh, we just figured better safe than sorry to really make sure to get it all uh, lined up. It did require, unfortunately, a decent amount of disassembly in order to get the longerons back out of the tail cone, because uh, you've got to unclico a bunch of the skin from the bulkheads in order to be able to, to finagle it out of there. Um, but we were definitely happier with the results in the end and are really glad that we went and did it. So we clamped and drilled each longeron one at a time. We wanted to make sure that we could use more clamps like along the entire length of one longeron instead of using fewer to clamp both of them at the same time. Um, perhaps it wasn't necessary to use all of those clamps along there, but it did make a big deal about trying to make sure everything's lined up just right. And so we figured it was better to work with as many as we could to really hold everything all into place. And before we could get started, 
I did have to harvest more Clecos from the side skins from our work from the previous day so that we had enough to use to Cleco the Longerons in place while we were uh, match drilling them to the side skins. So I did mention before, I think we had bought I think we'd bought like 500 of these 332nd Clecos. And yeah, <laughs> uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this day that, you know, you can see how few we had left. Um, if we were able to make it work, I mean, we did finish and get through the entire tail cone there without a problem using these. Um, but if you are planning, I think, to do your fuselage and your wings, go ahead and buy some more of those Clecos just to make it easier. I think we've bought another two or 300 since then. Um, and it's just kind of nice to have the extras around. And we haven't really had another situation come up since then where we have to really watch out for uh, how many Clecos we're using and trying to figure out how to, to move them around back and forth as we need it. Um, while I was match drilling the longerons to the side skins, Tyler got out and prepped the top skins that were going to get um, applied in one of the next steps. And it was really great. This is another perfect example of the advantage with having both of us working on everything um, is that we were able to knock out like two totally different tasks faster. Having him working on the next step in advance, being able to get those skins already prepped while I was still doing the match drilling. I mean, this helps us knock out a lot more. And on days like um, day 41 and day 42, when we had really long days out there in the garage, we can really get a lot more done. So if, if you have another person out there, a significant other, a family member that you wanna do this with, it is, it's a nice advantage of, of doing this with somebody else out there, someone special to you. So I think I actually didn't have enough Clecos or we didn't think we had enough Clecos to actually put one in each hole after drilling it. And so I would just kind of like, I don't know, inchworm it along. I'd put Clecos in like three or four of them. And then after I'd match drill the next hole, I'd take the one furthest away from it and move that Cleco into the hole and just kind of inch my way down the whole thing um, using like about, I don't know, five Clecos at a time trying to hold the ones I had just drilled in place. Um, and then when I got to the holes on either side of the clamps, I would leave a Cleco um, on either side of each clamp there, knowing that when I finished match drilling the entire launcher on there, I needed to take the clamps off and then go back in and now I had to match drill the holes um, through the skin into the Laundron underneath where the clamp had been covering them. So by just kind of leaving the two there on either side, it helped make sure I didn't uh, miss any of the holes that I needed to go back to um, to make sure that they all got match drilled. And the inchworm thing with the Calicos, maybe I had enough. I don't know. I'm looking at the basket right now, possibly. Um, but it's, it's hard to tell like how deep that basket was. There just might not have been enough to actually do it. So it was just, I guess it's one of these where if you are in a similar situation where you just don't have enough Calicos, you know, kind of, uh, inch your way down, I guess, if you can, and just kind of, it was more about like just making sure that everything was really tightly secured right around where I was, uh, was drilling and more like it, I didn't need to necessarily have a Clico in every single hole I drilled at the forward edge of the Longeron while I was all the way back there, like where I am now at the very back, that it was more about having the Clicos, um, immediately around where it was I was drilling. So hopefully, I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. And again, as an option or an alternative, if you don't have enough Clecos to use, like you're not gonna be doing uh, the slow build wings or fuse, and you just don't wanna have to get that many Clecos just to do the tail cone. One thing I just wanted to point out, and for any of you maybe who weren't aware of this, I, I actually did already know this before. It was some trick my dad taught me working out in the garage. Um, but it mentions in the book about making sure that you're sitting um, perpendicular to the skins, that you're, you're drilling square to the skins straight through it. And the way it mentions there, and just so you can kind of see, is to look at the reflection. And so what I mean by that is, 
if you're looking at the reflection of the drill bit in the skin there, if it's properly aligned with the hole, it should look like the reflection of the drill bit in the skin is just an extension of the drill bit that's actually on the drill. So you shouldn't see a bend. It should look like it's literally continuing straight through um, like a perfect, perfect mirror image there. You shouldn't see any sort of a angle in the reflection, if that makes sense. Before I get to uh, the big reveal at the end here, I wanted to go over, uh, one, I wanted to ask a question and two, go over something else. Um, the first, the question is, how do you guys feel on the length of the videos? I've normally been trying to keep all of the build videos to, you know, 10, 15 minutes tops, um, just to not have it get to be too long, but I know that it does take a while to get some of these videos put together and put out there. Is there an interest on your part? Would you prefer if I made longer videos to be able to cover more days and more work in a single video? Or do you prefer having it where it's shorter, easier to digest uh, video length? So just give me some feedback down in the comments below so I can figure out what would work best for the rest of y'all with what you get out of the videos. Second, um, for the fall, I have Plain Lady Why Buy Planes When You Can Build Them Long Sleeve Sweatshirt and Hoodies now available on plainlady.com. So be sure to go and check those out as something to enjoy in the colder weather this winter. And so now on to the big reveal, the big surprise that I'd mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, we are doing a really cool collaboration between Super Aero, Flight Chops, Plane Lady, Build Fly Go, and Jason Ellis, where we are going to be doing a builder roundtable on Super Aero's channel. And so without further ado, check out this little preview we filmed about our builder roundtable. What's up, Av Geeks? My name is Ryan from Super Aero Live, and I'm really excited to be hosting a roundtable with these four super awesome aircraft builders. Hey, everybody, this is Gil from the Build Fly Go channel. You may have seen Mary and I fly our RV 9A uh, across the US and to some fun, warm international destinations. We have videos about our flights, of course and also our RV-10 build, uh, which is the other aircraft we're building right now. It's uh, currently at the fuselage phase, and we have time lapses with commentary of the entire build process. We also have videos on how-tos on basic airplane building technique, some avionics use and commentary and reviews, and really any excuse to go fly. You'll see everything from a big international trip to a trip around the local patch in the pattern to get fuel or whatnot. We look forward to hearing your questions and uh, talking to you on the Build A Roundtable. Hey everyone, I'm Christine from Plain Lady and on my YouTube and Instagram, I document as we slow build our entire RV-10. We're a little over a year into our build and we have finished the empennage kit, the wing kit, and we're into the fuselage kit. I try and document any shortcomings we might have along the way, as well as any helpful tips or tricks that we've picked up on and other really helpful things that we've learned from other builders out there. I also have videos about different air shows that we've been to, like Air Venture up in Oshkosh and things like general aviation camping, what you might expect and what you might want to bring. I really love sharing the excitement and the adventure of this whole build experience with everybody out there. And I'm really looking forward to hearing the questions that you have and doing my best to try to help answer them for you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jason Ellis and like you, I am an aviation enthusiast that decided one day that I really wanted to fly and really wanted to own my own airplane, but didn't have the bottomless pit of wealth required to buy that high performance aircraft. So uh, I decided to go the experimental aviation route. Uh, I purchased a Vans RV-10 kit and I've been at it for five years at this point. And, you know, honestly, I'm still learning new things. It's been a great journey. I've been documenting all of it on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to do so in an approachable way. I am not an expert, but rather a guy with a dream and a pile of parts. And I'm always available to answer questions. And so I think this is an awesome opportunity to chat with y'all. And I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. And I'm Steve from the Flight Chops channel. I've got over 200 episodes covering all sorts of different flying adventures and flight training. 
And recently I've started a side stream of content focusing on following the process of building a Vans aircraft RV-14 with an awesome team of guys from the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association. So I'm really looking forward to learning from the builders on this panel. It's going to be hosted by Ryan on the Super Aero channel. So look for the link on all of our various social medias. I hope you guys check it out. I have left links for all of these great guys' channels in the description down below. Be sure to check them out. And if you have any questions that you want to ask all of us, make sure to leave it in the comments down below and make sure to join us on Wednesday, December 2nd at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Super Arrows channel. That's when the episode will be premiering and you can join us live in the chat during the premiere. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like these and to follow along as we build our RV tech.